hay team, so I'm going to actually split this into two separate videos as we're winding down this challenge. This is going to wrap everything up for you. So today's lesson, I'm going to talk about your nighttime building your cocoon and the items that you're going to need at night to not only get yourself to fall asleep, but putting these things in place is actually going to help you stay asleep, right? That's the other struggle. And listen, ladies, like we all get up to go to the bathroom during the night. I get it. But even if that is the case, you should be able to fall right back to sleep. And putting these things in place ahead of time are going to help you be able to do that. But just a little physiological side note, and I know because I literally get up and I experience having to go to the bathroom during the night so much, especially since my daughter was four. But there is a psychological component to that, and there also is a physiological component that and usually our bladder can hold us for eight hours at night we down regulate that function while we're sleeping so it's really an issue of something is waking us up and then when we wake up we're registering that feeling that sensation that we have to go to the bathroom not the other way around having to pee doesn't wake us up we wake up for some other reason and then say oh I have to pee and then it becomes a habit. So I hope that makes sense. So again, putting into place some of the mindset stuff that I've taught you is going to help a lot with staying asleep. Okay, so building your cocoon. There's a lot that you can unpack, so I'm splitting it up. So let's start with a few things that you're going to need to create the best sleep experience possible for your room. Number one, you want to remove I know this is hard, but I'm telling you it's worth it. Remove all the devices from your room. Yep, your phone, your laptop, your iPad, and your TV. Oh my God. Honest disclaimer, I still haven't done that one yet, but I don't have any other electronics in my room. If your phone is your alarm, get an old school alarm. So that's item number one, get an old school alarm clock. Item number two, I mentioned already, your plant, right? Make sure that your room has a plant in it. So you're gonna chuck all the devices, get them out of your room. You've got your plant, you've got your comfy bed with some really good thread count sheets and some nice pillows. If there's anything you're splurging on, it should be that. This is critical. So splurge, it's a good investment. It's your health. Next thing you're gonna need, magnesium spray. Now, magnesium is, is a wonderful mineral. There are so many health benefits to it, but magnesium helps us trigger serotonin, melatonin secretion. So magnesium actually can come in spray form. I believe I, I've gotten mine from Amazon. Um, if I can find a link, I will definitely share it with you guys in the challenge group. But magnesium spray is awesome. You can spray it, you actually spray it onto your body, onto your skin, and it gets absorbed in the skin at night. So you need your magnesium spray. Next thing, lavender. Lavender we've known for centuries to be a sleep-inducing scent. It's very relaxing. So you can do this in the form of a candle, which is what I do. I light my lavender candle every night. Or you can do it with essential oils, and you can just take your oil, put it, mix it in with some water and a diffuser spray, and just spray lightly around your room or your pillow. Either way, part of your cocoon items, you want to have your lavender and your magnesium. Then you want to have a good novel. Yep, a good fiction read. Something that will spark your imagination, but will not stimulate you so much that you stay awake to turn the pages. So everyone has their own preference, right? Um, pick your poison, pick a novel. I actually am just such a nonfiction person, but I can't read personal development at night. Personal development, self-growth, I mean, that stimulates me so much. And I used to read that at night and I would be like jamming, wired. So I moved to biographies. I love history and I love reading the biographies of, you know, just great leaders. Um, actually, it's funny because I'm, I'm reading a biography about Bruce Lee right now, uh, which is great. So pick your poison, have a good novel. What it'll do is it'll actually enhance your imagination. It'll help you get into a deeper REM sleep. And when you wake up having read 
something creative, you actually will experience a more creative, fruitful day. It's really magnificent. Okay, next thing, your celebration list. Now, every night before bed, you just keep a little notepad at your nightstand. Take five minutes and just jot down the things from your day that you are proud of. When you celebrate, maybe just a little victory, like, hey, I got the kids to school on time. Hey, I ate healthy today. Whatever that is, that little victory, celebrate it. Pat yourself on the back for it. It's peace of mind, and you will go to sleep better because of it. So you want to keep that kind of right next to your bed. So those are basically the easier items to create your cocoon. One thing you also might want to invest in if you don't already have are some really nice blackout shades, especially if you live in an area where there is light that gets emitted through your bedroom from maybe a neighbor's light or the street lights. Um, noise and light are pollution and they absolutely affect our ability to get a deep quality sleep. So if you live in the city, definitely need to get some blackout shades and make sure that you're soundproofing your bedroom so that not a lot of noise can filter in. Now, if you live in the country and your windows are open and you have light from the moon and you have the sounds of frogs and animals, that's okay. That's not noise and light pollution. That, again, is part of nature and our body absolutely jives with that. So, tomorrow's lesson, I'm going to talk about kind of the nightly to-dos, like really the bedtime ritual. Putting these things together is just absolutely essential for a good night's sleep, not just the length of time you're sleeping, but remember I talked about those sleep cycles, so getting that non-REM into that REM sleep and aiming for at least six cycles in a night. This is going to set you up for success. Boom. Let's get after it today. Make sure you comment below.